All right. Um, thank you again for the introduction. Um, everything that I do, I only have amazing passion. I think just the way uh, our brains work, Zorella is, you know, knows how to code, um, works really well with 2D space. My brain doesn't work like that. I don't really, I get lost in 2D space. I can see two, three pages and I get lost. So 3D is really how I think, how I, I see things. And um, the biggest drive for me personally to keep building, keep learning when you like I said there's not a big community is um i am passionate about travel and i'm very passionate about like uh, bringing travel industry into virtual reality making it very easy for you guys to discover interesting travel destination uh, make it very easy to book travel destination uh, and this is what drives me pretty much right so um and the coolest thing is that a couple of weeks ago i was able to kind of go full circle in the virtual reality development um pretty much from just Pretty modeling to now my app is available for testing. It's an early alpha. Um, and now I have a group of alpha testers. They're all over the world. And I invite people every day. And they're very active. They're very helpful. They give me feedback all the time. And I'm excited. Yeah, I think in November, maybe it will be already like a um, beta. And then early next year will be uh, already like the release version, I think. Um, finger crossed. And uh, today I want to talk about XR Interaction Toolkit. How do I make it bigger, Zarela? Do you know? Why is it not full screen? Yeah, it's not full screen. It's okay. So um, a while ago when I started uh, learning, I found out Unity, right? So there's different couple of different engines that are you can use to build virtual reality, mainly Unreal and Unity. For some reason, I picked up uh, Unity because it was a bigger community. It was a little more information on how to build, a little more tutorials where I was studying. And Unity kind of became my primary engine. Uh, they are... Um, the, the, the topic of today's conversation is XR Interaction Toolkit Example Project. So if you've never developed anything and you would like to start, I think this is an amazing place to start because you don't really need to even own a headset. You, you do have to have a pretty decent computer. Um, but without the headset, there is a, 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 an opportunity. You, I'm going to show you how you can use um, the device simulator, and you can go ahead and like test it, test everything. So what Unity did, they pretty much uh, packaged everything what you need to build a great VR experience and just give it to you. So what we're going to do is just look. Um, at the so XR Interaction Toolkit is actually just a separate package that you install in Unity, but the XR Interaction Toolkit sample package is the whole kind of complete experience. So um, let's try playing. This video I recorded, uh, it's a quick walkthrough of um, XR Interaction uh, package, what you get out of the box. All right, so you are in this uh, building. Hold on, I can hear myself. Maybe I can lower this one. OK. And uh, as you can see, there is a lot of different buttons that you can pretty much take and put in your own project. So. Look a little dot. So comfort mode. So comfort mode is that when when you walk around in this uh, vignette sort of things so will like zoom in because some people get very nauseous. So I liked when I just started. It was very when I walk. So the movement doesn't make me nauseous, and I you can make it very small. Or if you're really comfortable in VR, you can make it small. So this this button is a great. For example, I'm going to use it in my app. I'm literally going to just take it put it in my project, maybe change the button because I don't like how button works and I will let people adjust the way they, they kind of use the comfort, right? So if I need to use the object, what I can do is take this whole piece of uh, thing, um, replace the cube with something else. Like I need, I don't know, something, a plate or something. So you can just replace the, um, the prefab with whatever you need to do and then also a lot of interaction this one i don't know if you can hear you can talk into it so this is amplifies your voice uh also the shooter shooter game here um and it's a great thing you know you you don't have to and you can see the physics attached so everything is very very nicely nicely set up here 
And actually the package is here in my VR headset. So this is the same package. If you would like to go test it out for yourself, you, you can. This one is very cool. You can light up the candles. And um, this one is really cool. You can make a plant grow. Uh, so again, you know, go behind the scene and see why, how this plant is growing. It's it's all there. It's all for you. It's um, available. And this one, I had a little more fun to do that. So you can break it. So and you can see how physics work behind the scenes as well. And then this one is also cool. It's like a battery. You turn it, you put it on and it starts lights up the cubes. And then the gaze interactor, when you look, you don't have to touch, you just look and the object will change uh, the color. So the, pro the knows where you're looking at. And then there is a 2D UI. This is a, an example of 2D UI. If you need to take anything from there as well, this is a slot machine where you can pick up a, a pig and um, kind of have fun with it. And again, just think about how you can use it in your. Maybe you can. Maybe this could be like a big uh, alien ship, right? That comes up, and you can just make it huge. Like your imagination is pretty much limited by. What, what you can do is limited by your imagination, right? I can see something like teeny tiny, but in VR, you can blow it up and you can uh, use this up to your desires. And then the doors, you can open the doors, you can put in the keys. The keys will also change the color once it's in, the, in there. And if you're doing some escape room game or something like that, then it's also good. For me personally, I don't build a lot of games because I'm using virtual reality and metaverse as a, an extension to, I wouldn't say life, but as a, just an extension of the internet. So um, for me. And then this is really cool. You can open the drawers and look inside. And this is 3D UI also example, different buttons. If you're building a spaceship, maybe you can also use it. And all the buttons you press on it, you can program it the way you want it. What they do, if you press it, what, what are they doing the buttons? Have any questions so far? Yeah, it's it's free. Um, let's go over here. Uh, I'll, I'll show you. I'll show you. Yeah, because. Um, Unity just wants you to create. I mean, it doesn't worth anything for them to create it and give it out to developers. I mean, they just want you to be successful, promote. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll show you in a second. Uh, let's start from um, how you do that, right? So your first thing you have to install Unity Hub. So Unity Hub is pretty much like a container where you're gonna hold different versions of Unity. Over the years, I've had millions of different versions, right? Because Unity coming up with different version every, I don't know, six months or how, how often they, <laughs> it's like every six months to a year, there is another Unity version. And um, so what, we, uh, what I would recommend is that uh, the good rule of thumb is that when you get a package, like this package, right? You always have to see what uh, what uh, version is built with, because if you just randomly select a different version, you might have mis mis like miscompatibility, and it will throw you a lot of errors. So, um, would you you have to install twenty twenty point three point forty seven. F1, uh, and you can find it in archives. Uh, when you go over here to install, um, it will give you a way to go kind of into the Unity on the website and select this particular uh, version. However, another thing how you can do it, uh, now this step is not that not necessary if you don't have the headset. If you just want to play, you don't need this step. This step is for those who have headset. Then you have to install MetaQuest uh, Developer Hub. So this is what I use. Um, it's just running on my machine. And this is how I um, distribute my app. You can see the app distribution. So I go here and uh, I can see the version of my app. 
um, it will tell me how many users in the app, what the version of the app, and then I will just click install a new version. So my file is, is the APK file that I use. When I package the game, I just go into the developer hub. And also um, head mount display uh, device is the headset. And also you would need Oculus Link, which is um, doesn't come. I, I was struggling for an hour. I was like, why doesn't it work? The cable that came with the Oculus, it turns out that's not the cable. Even though it fits perfectly in my computer and my headset, it's not the cable. You need a special cable. Thankfully, I had that. It's a huge, thick one. I think it's $80 or $20 on Amazon, but $80 on the actual Meta, Meta, Meta store. But again, we can skip it if you don't want to. So how do you get the, the kit? The, uh, the link, I can also share the slides, but you can either just search uh, External Interaction Toolkit Sample Project, um, or you can click the link. Uh, it will take you to the GitHub page. You just click on this green button um, and then download zip file and uh, put it on your, uh, you can put it on the desktop. I, I mean, I usually do closer to the root folder. So the D drive or C drive, because uh, sometimes uh, if you like make a copy of the project, like you want to save, or, like make a copy, I will tell you the project name is too long, like because some of the files inside will be too long. So try to put it like closer to the to the root folder. But if you're trying out, you don't have to just create like a Unity folder on your desktop and install it there, unpack it, unzip it. Um, and then you go open the Unity Hub. Where are the people? Okay. And then you go to open over here. Uh, where you installed it on the um, on your either desktop or inside Unity folder. I just want to tell you that sometimes um, it unzips kind of one folder inside the other folder. So you need to select the folder that will have like assets and all the library will be in that folder. So it will be like a little like a doll within the doll, right? So make sure that you only open in the folder that's like the, the final folder where your assets are. Otherwise you won't be able to open the folder. Once you open the folder, if you don't have this version installed, Unity will warn you, will say, you don't have this ver version, it will have a problem. Would you like to install it? And you say yes, and you will install this, this version and then you will be fine. You're not gonna have any problems opening the project. So once you open the project, it looks like this. Uh, uh, we have inspector inspector on this side on this side, like the hierarchies in the hierarchy, everything that's in inside the project at this time, right? So if you delete something, it's not deleting from the project, it's just deleting from the scene. Um, all of your um, all of your assets are here. Um, and when you click on it, so you, you can see assets uh, in, the, in each folder. So in order to find what, what's going to happen when you open the file, you're probably going to see empty. There will be nothing. So be like, what's happening? You know, it was it was not like this to the presentation. So you have to go to scenes, go to um, project over here, find um, XRI examples right here, XR examples, and then you scroll to scenes. And when you click on scenes, you'll see different scenes, right? So this one, what we're looking at, the main scene is called this XR example main. Click on it, and then it will take you to this whole scene. But if you wanna go examine the, the, the separate parts, they also separate them into all of the scenes you can see over here. So I would recommend you to make a copy of the scene. So if you mess up something, you don't have to like completely reinstall the project. So what you do, you just click and then like uh, click and then, oops, sorry, what happened? Wait a minute, okay. Uh, open in the, open in folder. So if you open in folder, uh, make a copy of the scene and then just mess it, mess up with this and delete it, and then just don't try not to edit this particular scene. But if you mess something up, just delete it and unzip the file that you have, just unzip it again and open it up again in Unity, that, that's going to be fine. So uh, one more thing that, uh, as I promised, that you don't have to have a headset, what you do, you go in the search bar over here and you start typing XR device simulator. 
And then you're going to see this. Uh, it's so devising later. And you just drag and drop. And that way, um, Unity will show you this scene. And then what you do is you press play, right? So you press play, the button over here on the top, here. this one, you press play, and this is what you're going to see. Uh, there will be this window of... Uh, you can switch it by pressing tab and you will be switching your head and your hands, right? So always press tab. And then just remember that there is a lot of different controllers. So it will tell you which controllers that, uh, I mean, which buttons, because there's grip button, there's trigger button, there's joystick button, there is a secondary button, the primary button, and, and they all on the both controllers. Um, but they will tell you here, but it's a great way to test, right? If you don't have. Any questions? Go ahead. So for the controllers, because there, there are different ones and different headsets, mm -hmm. are they all kind of you like similar in the back end though? Like if you say trigger, it's going to map pretty much okay to all the other like handsets? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. the, uh, I mean, I can speak for Unity. Do you know if HTC Vive has the same trigger controllers? Yeah. The, the yeah. Frameworks. I think they're all the same. Because I know I have the first one, the Oculus 2, and then they look different, but they have exactly the same. I was actually thinking about how Apple is going to do that, because for me, I'm thinking you can, you don't, you can't just like seamlessly press without triggering something else. So they might completely redo the controllers, might be just like pressing on your fingers or something. So I don't know how they're going to do it, because they're not going to have controllers at all. <clears throat> Any other questions? No? Okay. <clears throat> Come on. All right. So, and here you can see when you go um, and just start having fun with it, go into different, uh, just uh, click on your a particular interest, whatever is interested you, and then go start exploring. What, what is attached, you know, Excel ever? This is attached to Excel ever, and then you can see how is it packaged, what's on, uh, what's, uh, what's on top of it, right? Sometimes, so sometimes if you just need this part, what I do is like I take the the main name, and I just drag and drop in my project from there because they all all of them are prefabs. That means that uh, if you edit it here, the main one is not going to mess up. So the main one will always stay. <clears throat> Even you create your own scene, the brand new scene you say, I need a button or I need something, you just start typing, it will pop up and you just drag and drop it. And then you can use it in your own, in your own way. So what this project doesn't have, which I found um, to be very important, this what I use in my app, and this is like the most number one important thing that my app has is the UI screen. Because when you're in VR, you're just roaming around, you always have one of something very quickly that you can open and go somewhere else, right? Like, or find information or maybe like teleport between different different scenes. So having a UI that will open up real quick, it was very important. And I'm actually in the middle of a course on Udemy. So I would recommend if you're interested, a multiplayer a virtual reality game on Udemy, wait for the sale, 12 bucks, best $12 I spent my life. Uh, he explains everything so well. And this script is collaboration between that one, the script that I found on Udemy and ChatGPT because the guy who did it on Udemy it was literally a scre screen that would open up with a click of a button. But I was like, okay, well, I walked away, but the screen opens up over there. But I don't want a screen open up. I want it to follow me. And then I made it to follow me with ChatGPT but then I, turn, I realized that when I look this way, the screen opens up here. So it took us another couple of hours to figure out how to do that. So now I, I have an amazing script, script that I can share that whenever you're looking at, you click on the button and the screen will be always in front of you. So it's like the most amazing thing ever. Um, so it's a little tricky to do that. It's a little more advanced, but uh, that Udemy course, go ahead. 
I'd call multiplayer virtual reality basic. Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, Tafik Tafik. Uh, I forgot his name. I think he's one of the best instructors on the internet. Like a lot of instructions miss something, but he's doing everything very clean. Like you can follow him, and you know you know you're gonna have an, a, um, a result. And also he's very good at answering questions, so he's very quick. Like you always have a answer from him within the same day or like next day you always have an answer from him on online uh so in order to do the switch so we have two controllers right so the controllers have the buttons sure. and uh, it's up to developer there's not really uh, a standard kind of way how everybody doing kind of everybody doing differently uh, I decided that I'm gonna use the B button. So this is the sec uh, secondary button on the right controller. And this is the, the secondary button on the left controller and the primary button, which you can all program them different. You can have a multiple different screens open up if you want, right? Uh, you have to go to, uh, in order to set up, I'm gonna do a quick overview um, how to do that. You search for, in this in the search button you search XLI default input actions when you open it you're gonna see this screen you will have to pick the right hand interaction over here when you click on it there will be a list of what you can do and then you just click on the plus button over here and then um, name it switch UI and then it will say bind the trigger right you click on the binding the trigger and then over here you select which button is going to be so i selected that this is going to be my right button complicated but again we're not here like 100 percent. go on the course and it will be everything explained so once you do that you bind your button then we editing our ui screen uh, script oh wait not UI screen. Oh, uh, UI screen. So we need the screen, right? So this is my screen that I currently use in my application. So this this screen is very complex. Uh, it has a lot of different things. You can also try it out. But uh, where did did I buy it? I built it in uh, Blender. Um, the problem is that you need to have a particular way of stretching it. So you can't just like take a, a, a regular piece of like flat screen and like bringing in so you have to experiment which way it's going to be like scaled uh so i was experimenting it was like very complicated it was always crooked but then i kind of figure out that you have to scale it this way and then it works all right so we bring in our own script i mean screen and then oh a second oh and then what we do let me stop uh, stop sharing for a second and i'm gonna any questions so far yeah so if i understand this correctly then it's <clears throat> it's <clears throat> yeah so in my understanding this correctly, like Blender and Unity are completely separate programs. You in order to add something to your game in Unity, you would like a, a custom, a custom um object essentially. You would create a 3D model in Blender. Yep. Then you would load it into Unity and then Unity kind of just uses the UI to kind of tell it what to do or how to move it, where to place it, all that kind yeah. of stuff. So Blender is a 3D modeling software, it doesn't do anything, it just you can build things, right? The furniture stuff. And now the ChatGPT extension to Blender, you can like say it, it will start building. It, it's not great, but it's a step forward, right? So you, you will eventually be building. But Blender I use just for all the modeling, <clears throat> 3D modeling, and then you package it to the BX file or OBG, Collada, whatever. But I usually use all uh, BX. And then you bring it into Unity. Um, uh, and that's it, yeah. I, I kind of work uh, simultaneously together, like Blender and it's like left hand and right. And do you use, does <laughs> Unity do like animations or do you do, if you have objects that have sort of- You do animations. Okay. Yes. Yeah, okay. It's, it's a good tool. Okay, because I know Blender also, I mean, you can build animations into 3D models in there too as well. You can, and then you just import them in, into Unity and they work fine. They it will understand. 
the keys the same it will be the same you can even edit some keys um but blender is not the only 3d modeling software you can use maya you can use um a bit, uh, what's that cinema 4d or whatever but they all like expensive blender is free and they've been doing coming up with amazing updates like mind-blowing updates like z brush almost you know you can do sculpting you can do um like modification like now did you try that oh you didn't try there's a blender 4 that i haven't tried yet it's like amazing so anyway um yes blender and unity they kind of go hand in hand but they do different things completely you cannot build you cannot build you cannot model in unity there is um i think pro builder or something i never used it because uh, i know blender so i don't want to mess with pro builder but i think they have it which you can try using all right you can yeah for sure you can animate but but you can't animate if you need like a character moving hands unless your character already um keyed in in uh, in blender right so it has keys and then when you bring it here you can mod modify the keys all right so let me show you this one so th this one um this is U UI interaction controller script. So what we're doing here is, um, first of all, I have different ways because I have different scenes on my first scene, the canvas is see, uh, visible. Uh, on the other scenes, it's not visible. So you can, you know, fix that. Put like false here, uh, true here or false if you want your UI, UI canvas visible or not. And then another thing is that what we're doing here and then uh deactivating ui control by default i edited this the original script because i don't want my ui control be deactivated i always want to see the sticks uh because i don't know i feel more comfortable like that and then okay so but the thing and then of course we're gonna set up the the base controller will be the ray interactor. I'm gonna show you how to do that. And then, but the coolest part is this one, it's pretty much like the one that I took, you know, I don't know, two, three hours. Actually, I had to pay for Gucha GPT to figure this out because the, the free one didn't figure it out for like days. And then I paid for it and a few hours we figured it out. Uh, what the, it does, again, it like, uh, move camera move canvas to camera so it kind of calculates you can tell how far you want the canvas to be and then it will um, adjust it and bring the canvas to you no matter where you're looking at uh, and then what do we have here and then and this link also the link to the script will be in in my slides you can share um any questions okay so what happens here let's go back to unity um, you bring this uh what happened here what is it please zoom share i think one thing that is important to know is that uh in unity all the objects All the objects that uh, you have in your scene, they're game objects, so they could be modified using code. So, so anything you have you see in the scene can be moved around and can be interacted Tarana. with just using any script. Tarana, come here. It's not sharing again. Yeah, all in the Is it sharing? Is it sharing? Is it not sharing? Is it sharing? Is it sharing? Is it sharing? I did. So is Unity like 3JS? <clears throat> Have you ever used 3JS? Because uh, the code right there looks like similar, like the transforms positions. So Unity uses a .NET framework, so it's all C-sharp code, but uh, it's similar to 3JS in the sense that they're both uh, engines. 
just 3JS is more of a framework, uh, but they come already with pre-built libraries that you can utilize to make interactions of any kind. But Unity is more than that because Unity gives you a full editor where you can do a lot of work without coding oh, anything. Finally. I don't know what happened here. Cool. Uh, anyway, and they even have plugins that have visual coding for people who don't know how to code. So, but uh, it used to support JavaScript at one point, and then they dropped that because that net is far more powerful at this point. Hold on, guys. Sorry, I hate Mac. I have desktop. It's big. It's comfortable. The whole workstation. Hold on a second. Let's go back. Go back for a second. All right. So, am I blocking people here? All right, so what happens, uh, there is a little procedure that I have to do. You can see here, complete Excel origin set up. This is actually really, really amazing because the Unity took everything, packaged it in a very nice way. Everything works, the teleportation works. Um, and now we have to put this script on the right hand, right? Remember, because we bind, bind, binded it to the right hand, what we're doing, we're just taking the script, it's an our scene, and we're just dragging and dropping, just like pull it and drag it uh, over here. And you can see UI, UI interaction controller script is right here. And what we're doing, we're now starting to drag, um, I want to remove these people here. And then what we're doing here, um, Ray Interactor will go into UI controller. Direct interactor will be going into base controller. You just drag it, just hold it and drag it, drop, hold it and drag and drop. And then the XRI right hand interaction, you just click on this little circle and search sw uh, switch UI because this is what we binded the, the hand to the switch UI. And then the main screen is the screen that you brought in, that's your own UI. And I put it, it, as you can see here, it's under the XR origin. So it has to be a child of XR origin. That way it will go, always follow you wherever you go. And then the distance from camera, it's also, we put it in the screen, script, right? So we wanted the distance to be 1.5 meters, which is nice, comfortable distance, but you can do it whatever. And then main camera is your head, the head of the avatar is your main camera, it's right here. So we take main camera and drag it. I got it from Udemy, again, don't stress out. This is what he told me, this was amazing. I just need, did a little bit adjustment as you saw, but you can have the script, it's fine. And that's it. <clears throat> um, now the last step is to build it. Uh, um, if you don't use a headset, you don't have to really switch because if you, uh, by default, this package will be on PC now. Um, you don't do anything. If you do use headset, you have to put it to Android and then switch platform. So, and that's it. And then if you, if, again, if you don't do anything, you can just play, you know, keep keep that, that, that button on top, just keep play. But what I do is I, I have an Android selected then I put build and run. And my device is, I don't know why it's not showing here, but my device is um, Oculus. You can see it's um, usually showing up here and default device. And you just put build and run, and then you can have an APK file. Um, and this this is the APK file that you actually take and upload to the store. There's a lot more to that, but not to overwhelm you, this is probably the best that I can uh, share this time. Any questions? Oh, and then what happened here? This is the the video of uh, what, what's actually what we what we created. I was just recording this, and then you can see I'm clicking, and you can I'm looking, turning my head, and I'm clicking on the on the B button. It's showing. All of this interactions, this is like a different lecture, but this is all also chat GPT was amazing because I wanted my, uh, I didn't want to do manual animation for my country. So I, I, he made me a really nice script where we nicely slide the countries, you know, the, the regions of the, of the, of the world. All right. That's it for me. Questions? Any questions in the chat? Zorala, you watching the chat? Uh, 
RTX four. What's RTX one? Oh. No, I have. What do I have? Yeah. RTX something. Oh, 48. No, my mind is like 2080. Yeah, the air link shouldn't be related to the 40 series in any way. So that would be like the, what your link? router or something. Yeah, the air link. No, no, no. It that shouldn't. would be something else. It's um, make sure but build and run that this is the good link. You know, if you buy it from the meta, meta, it should work. It should not have a problem. I mean, it's amazing. 4080 is twice as best, best than mine. Yeah, that's strange. I bought the current one I use. Uh, I got from Amazon because I broke. <laughs> I broke the expensive one, so I bought for twenty bucks, and it works fine. Any other questions there? Yeah, you can unmute yourself, guys. If no other questions, you want to try it out here, and we can stop on Zoom, and we will share the script on. Where, where are you guys usually sharing the resources? On Meetup, yes. Oh, you will? Oh, okay. Okay, so she shared the presentation on Zoom, but also you can share on the Meetup too. Okay. All right, so no more questions here. Yes. Well, I'm sub I am signed up for the developer, whatever, but they're still coming up. It's not like released officially yet. Like the, the tutorial, like the program program. I mean, I think they do invite kind of like top developers slowly, but I'm very curious to know how they're gonna switch controllers. For me, honestly, controllers are so important because like when I was I was very active in Altspace and Altspace had a million different events. So when you are in in in, in VR your hands, like, you see, like, okay, you do something, or like, I'm drinking water, or whatever, so your hands are in VR over here, so I don't know how Apple's going to do, like, I don't want my hands to be always see what I'm doing in real life, right, <laughs> so, uh -oh. but uh, I'll be curious to know, but I, we still don't know their clear, their vision for the, I mean, what I saw is a person sitting on the couch and moving screens around, right? So people are like, can we play VR games? Can we do all the, all stuff? Like, oh, we're just sitting here and looking at something. So we'll see. But uh, but the thing is about the XR Interaction Toolkit is that it's a cross-compatible. Supposedly, the XR Interaction Toolkit will work with Apple. That's why when I was, there's an option you can use Oculus Native or VR or something like Oculus integration package, which also comes with like avatar, animation, all kinds of stuff. But then you won't be able to teleport to different devices, right? So you always have to be stuck with that. So eventually I want to do it on HTC Vive, all of this and that. So you need to build that package so you can distribute your app to all different devices with the same, um, you know, control. So, but I'm curious to know, yeah, we'll see. All right, should I turn up Zoom? Yeah. Oh, you. All right, thank you guys so much for coming. I hope you learned something and um, build something and text me, send me a message if you have questions or you wanna create some something awesome. Thank you, Kurt. Kurt, sign up. I just got your message, I'll respond to you in, in a little while. You should look at it, it's, it's uninstall app. He's testing, 